This is Making Dough Show, where we talk about making dough in the restaurant business. My name is Hingham, and uh, I'm so glad you're here today. And today we're talking about something fun, and that is coaching team members. And I got a question from Joseph, and he sent uh, us a message on our website. You can do the same. Just go to makingdoughshow.com. Scroll all the way down and submit your question. I'm just going to get into it. He's asking about advice on an employee. He's saying that this employee's worked for me for three years. She shows up. She does her job. She picks up shifts if asked. Is nice to everyone, but complains about guests all the time, all day, and affects her tips, which then turns into more complaining. And so he's asking me how to approach this employee. So uh, I'm going to go over some of the things that if I was sitting across from the table from Joseph, these are the questions I would ponder on. One of the ways that I like to approach things for our restaurants, at least, is first assess before making any judgment calls, before we look at, you know, what's wrong and what's the course of action. We need to assess the damage. We need to assess what's going on in the in our restaurant that we need to tackle. And more than once, it's always going to be a multiple variety of things that are going on that we need to work on. So we're, again, move past whatever that is going on. So first off, you know, when I'm assessing a team members, I'm going to look at the positive. And you mentioned a bunch of positive things, which is sadly rare in the world, right? You're telling me that this person has been with the company for three years. Fantastic. Sadly, you know, a lot of people don't stick around that long. So they've been with you for three years. They do their job. Great. A lot of people don't even do their job. You know what I'm saying? Pick up shifts if asked. Great. That's nice of them that they do that, right? is nice to everyone. That's another plus. You know, sometimes people are not nice to everyone, right? So these are the things that are positive. And so first off, I want to ask myself, is this team member that I have on my team aware of the positive uh, that they bring to the team, right? So you mentioned like four different things that are positive. So my question uh, to you, back to you is, is this team member aware? Have you given a positive feedback to this team member of the things that you value and appreciate from this team member who's been with you for three years. If not, mark your calendar. When are you going to have that conversation, right? Because it's important. Put yourself in that employee's position. So we want to make sure they know that they're doing something right. So complaining about guests all day, which is a firm no, obviously, for example, in our restaurants, I'm sure it's for you. We are here to serve people and that's a no-go. And not only just, it's not about complaining, it's about a posture of somebody's heart in our team, not understanding why we're here, what's the mission of our company or our restaurant, right? And that toxic verbiage behavior that affects the culture of the company. So it needs to be addressed. So I wonder when this behavior started, Joseph, is for you to assess, wait a minute, she's been doing this for the last year, in the last six months, or all these three years she's been like that, and when was the last time this was addressed? So again, I don't know. Um, These are some of the other questions I would ask you. So what's the level of investment in this team member? Are they in the leadership position or they're just a server? And maybe they've been stuck at a server position for three years. I mean, is that what it's been? Because a lot of times people are complaining about, they say one thing, but they mean another. You know, humans are really complex. I really wish it wasn't, but that's kind of is the case. So ask yourself, the. I mean, I would ask you these questions, right? What's the level of investment that you have put into this particular team member. The other thing I would ask you is that are you training your people for skill set and also for attitude? Because sadly, just training our people on skill set without giving that depth and the meaning when it comes to the attitude and as I mentioned, like posture of the heart, it just becomes, you know, this mundane after a while of doing that task over and over again. It becomes mundane. And I'm telling you that reminding myself with our company is the same thing with our restaurant and our people. But again, it is important to spend time training our people, equipping them, understanding their attitude and how it affects the quality of their life, the quality of the time that they have at work as well. So do you have, have you spent some time on that? I have a show on the channel, I'll link down below, which is about how to increase your, you know, 
retention, conducting pulse meetings. Pulse meetings are these one-on-one -on -one quick meetings that you need to have frequently with every single team member or your restaurant managers need to have. So when was the last time you had a one-on-one -on -one meeting with this team member to kind of understand what's going on in their personal life? What are their goals and visions being part of your restaurant? Do they want to become a manager? Maybe they're bitter about the fact that they're kind of feeling stuck um, in, in their position and you've not kind of laid a path forward. For example, this person's like, I want to become a front of the house manager. And you're like, dude, they have the poorest attitude. But that gives you an opportunity when you're asking them, hey, what do you see yourself next in the next six months? And they're like, I'd love to become a restaurant, you know, a management position. You're like, fantastic. Let me share with you how we can get there. These are some of the skill sets that we need to work on. These are some of the things that is required, you know, if you become a leader in, as a manager in this restaurant when it comes to attitude and things of that nature in terms of character traits that you're looking for in a manager at your restaurant. Conducting these pulse meetings, again, gives you a pulse and a health of your organization, the pulse of this of your team ultimately. Maybe there's something personal going on. Maybe this person's married, their husband's sick. Maybe they have marital problems, right? This gives you an opportunity as well to kind of learn a little bit about what's going on in this person's life um, and how you can serve them the best you can. Again, if we're not aware of the problems, we really don't know how to solve them. Next question is, you know, sometimes you want to directly ask a team member, hey, on a scale of one to 10, how happy are you working here? Maybe they're going to tell you a four or they're going to tell you an eight, right? It depends. And then you're going to have some follow-up questions to dig a little bit. Four will tell me more about that. Maybe like our, if they're going to be complaining about our customers or it's maybe they have a problem with team members or whatever thing it is, it's, it's, or maybe like, it's at an eight. I'm very happy working here. Then you're able to identify, well, then how come is it that you're found complaining about our customers all the time, right? You ask that team member those questions um, directly and give them an opportunity to give you an answer. It's going to be incredibly insightful uh, for you. And then you can kind of give them perspective. So when was the last time you had a one-on-one -on -one meeting with this person? You wrote down the content of what you talked about and you put it in that person's folder. Another question I have for you, Joseph, is that you need to assess the culture of your company. You need to step away. I know it's kind of hard. It's just like, you know, when somebody criticizes your children and you get very defensive, I get that. Um, and so all I'm asking you is step away and look at the culture of your company when it comes to the attitude of your attitude, your management team's attitude, and your whole team's attitude toward customers, especially customers that are picky. We all have them. We all have them. Some customers that are uh, picky, they are demanding, they're unreasonable. We all have them. When those issues come up, what is your approach? Do you complain about the customer uh, as well? Because you are ultimately affecting the culture of your company. You're telling your people that it is okay to complain about a customer. We get what we tolerate, whether it's with our children, same as with our team. So if you have tolerated hearing complaints about customers and you never kind of addressed it head on, then you, again, you getting what you tolerate it. So you need to kind of shift your perspective that from now on, you no longer are going to tolerate that. So for instance, in our restaurants, we have zero tolerance um, when it comes to having a poor attitude toward our customers because customers pay our bills. A lot of times when you listen to different management people and fancy people talking and you, they tell you that people, your people, your employees are more important than your customers. You hear that many times. To me, I know who pay our, pays our bills. Our employees come and go. You have a high turnover rate in our industry. And to me, I want loyal customers that are going to stick around for years to come because that's going to pay the bills. So again, it's really taboo to say that. But I make it clear to our people, we are here to serve customers. We're, and then we're here to serve our people. That is our perspective in our company. You can have whatever perspective it is for your company. You're the boss. You figure it out. For me, I want our people to know we, our boss is the customers. That is our approach. And we do not tolerate people complaining about the boss who pays the bills for everybody. So you asked me a question how to approach about a team member. And so as I mentioned, first thing is what I would do. I would not complicate this. I will sit down with this team member and ask some hard questions. 
And I would just do it as soon as you can. This week, mark your calendar. When is that person scheduled? Just go to the restaurant and meet with this person. You always, again, want to start with a positive. As we mentioned, hey, Susan, imagine. Susan, you know, I really appreciate these things about you and whatever. One of the things that I've noticed is that you complain a lot about the, you know, other customers and things of that nature, whatever it is that she does or whatever you've heard. And you want to start apologizing and say, here's what it is, Susan. I have seen you complain about our customers in the past however many months. And it is my fault for not letting you know, you know, our approach when it comes to our customers. So that is my fault for, for not giving you that feedback. And for that, I apologize. However, moving forward, Susan, I'm going to have a problem if I hear you complaining about our customers or anybody. We're changing our culture. We're changing. And I'm, what I'm telling you, I'm going to meet with every team member to make sure we no longer are going to tolerate having, you know, a bad attitude toward our customers. And it could, in fact, lead to your termination. And here is why. Our customers pay the bills, especially during this climate that whatever world we're going through right now in this time, we cannot afford to lose customers. If something matters to you, you need to make sure you communicate that to your team members. Listen, this issue of how we treat our customers is incredibly important to me. That's it. If if you don't mention it verbally, they, they're not going to know that it matters to you because, again, partly because we tolerated it for this long. And always lead with asking a lot of questions. Susan, you tell me why we should actually be grateful to our customers. You tell me why matters that we have customers. And I know it is extra work for you, but what if we didn't have customers? What are the implications of having a shift that we only have two tables? What's going to happen? How's that going to affect your hours? How's it going to affect your tips? How's your attitude, Susan, affects your tips? You ask Susan, Susan, don't you go to other restaurants? Yeah. Put yourself in that customer's shoe. You know, imagine that you, you know, you work hard for your money for every dollar you make. Is that correct? Susan's going to say yes. So are our customers. They work very hard. They trade hours of their life for their money. And, you know, just like you, and imagine you go to a restaurant and the server is mistreating you. Or, for example, you have a request or you want something crispy or you want extra something on it. And the server gives you attitude. How would you feel being in the receiving end of this? And you pause and you let Susan understand and get perspective. Always when you want to wrap up these hard conversations, it is important to do it also on a positive note. Susan, I want the best for you. I appreciate that you stuck around for three years here alongside of us through thick and thin. I want you to be happy here. I want you to make a lot of tips. I want you to get along with the team. I'd like you to come to work wanting to be here. Make sure you make your intentions clear of why you're having these conversations with your team members, particularly in this case, Susan. And one of the things I've learned is that, you know, if I talk too much, I want to make sure at the end of the conversation, the team members understood what we're talking about and what are the actionables moving forward. I want to make sure we write that down and we get the team member to sign it. It goes into their folder. So you always want to ask them, hey, to wrap this up, I want to know what you understood of this conversation you and I had. And moving forward, what are you going to do different? And then once you, you know, have them sign that paper that you had that conversation, they told you what they're going to do and it goes into their folder. The next phase is you need to follow up. You need to observe this team member way more closely of the coaching that you've given them. We need to be quick to encourage our people. If you see any progress, now it's not going to be where you want it to be. And it, because it's a gradual thing and it takes time. But if you see something positive that the, that they were able to shift and change because of the feedback session they had with you, be quick to encourage them. Be quick to kudo them. We must be incredibly aggressive about our culture, the culture of our business. It's a living and breathing thing. And every time we hire a new person, Every attitude, every new thing that we allow in the business is shifting our culture one degree at a time. Every new hire has the potential to shift your culture to the positive or to the negative. We need to guard our culture and know what we tolerate. So again, I'm not telling you something new. We work on this stuff all the time. We're As I'm talking to you about this issue, we're going through a drama season with some of our teams. So what it was when I did, like, I, in fact, it was on Saturday. The minute I hear a drama issue going on between team members, I told my husband, we're going to the restaurant. We're meeting with our, you know, leadership team one-on-one. -on -one. I need to get to the bottom of this because I do not want to tolerate drama in the restaurant because it simply festers. It goes nowhere good. 
And another reason is because I want our people to know the culture of our company is that we do not tolerate drama. Would love to hear your thoughts on this episode. If you are watching uh, this show on YouTube, be sure to subscribe and comment below and let me know your thoughts on it. What is your approach when it comes to coaching your team? Uh, and if you're listening to this show on a podcast, I'd greatly appreciate it if you take the time to figure out a way to leave us a review it would mean the world. Thank you so much for tuning in and uh, let's get back to work and make some dough. Thank you. Bye-bye.